Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Third Aid Challenge, and today we have Marvel Studios assembled Thor Love and Thunder. This is the first of our, uh, of any of these that we've had before. Uh, in the past, I just sort of had Marvel Studios assembled as one of the list things, but I decided there's so many of them now, and we've run out of, we've run through a, pretty much most of the Marvel films at this point, Figured I'd build out some more Marvel options for us. So yeah, this gets a it gives me a chance to look at the Marvel films from another perspective, behind the scenes, the making of each of these films and TV series that are Disney Plus originals. And uh, so yeah, here we are with Thor: Love and Thunder, which is the very first one that we're doing. And hey, well, welcome to February. This is uh, from 2022, of course. It is about 56 minutes long documentary. Most of them are usually around an hour long. And uh, yeah, you get to go behind the scenes here with Taika Waititi, the director, writer. Uh, I think he's a writer. I should have checked. <laughs> he's very much part of the story, yes. Uh, yeah, he, he is the writer. There's other people probably contributed, but still. Uh, starring Chris Hemsworth, Tessa Thompson, Natalie Portman, Christian Bale, Russell Crowe. There's so many people in this uh, that it, it uh, makes it for a fun adventure. Now, uh, if you haven't seen the film, there's no reason you should be watching the making of, and there's no reason you should be watching me talk about the making of. Doesn't make any sense. But, uh, yeah, there's there's a number of people that might have had somewhat of an issue with the film. Uh, I'm not really here to talk about that, because this is all about the celebration of the how, who uh, put this together and how they did it. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of talk with the actors of like, oh, I love working with Christian Bale. Oh, Chris Hemsworth is great. All these things. Yeah, there's a lot of people just sort of uh, <laughs> talking about how, how great they are. There's nobody going, oh, man, that Natalie Portman, what a jerk. No, no, you're never going to see that. Um, but in this case, you have uh, people telling you, you know, why they signed on, why they wanted to work this way. And when it came it comes to costumes and, and makeup and props and creatures and all these costs, you know, just all this stuff. Uh, you get to see the people who are excited about the work they do and uh, why they do it and uh, innovating things, things they've done, never done before. This is actually the first Marvel film to make use of the volume, which is the sort of immersive, almost 360 degree screen that wraps around uh, the actors as they move you know, through their scenes. And it, it's, it was pioneered, it was first used on The Mandalorian, also on Disney+. Plus. And it was used uh, here in Thor uh, for the very first time in a Marvel production. So that's kind of cool. There's also some other uh, elements in this that I can't remember the thing, but uh, what it was, what it's called, but it had to do with lighting. It's also used for the very first time. It's some innovative stuff. And uh, you get to see some uh, longer blooper kind of stuff, behind the scenes things. Uh, it just from a perspective that you wouldn't get uh, even freeze framing the film in itself, you get to see uh, all the different gods. You get, well, you don't get to see all the different gods. You'll still have to do some freeze framing, probably, from the big Citadel scene. And uh, there's all, there's just there's lots of little bits with uh, other actors who did little cameos in this, like Matt Damon and Melissa McCarthy. Uh, which again, if you haven't seen the film, I'm not going to spoil it. <laughs> Why are you watching this um, if you haven't seen the film? Uh, but yeah, I, I, I welcome anybody talking about uh, whether they like the film or not, and, but, but give a reason why if you're going to do that. Um, you know, some people's arguments are valid, but I, I think what Taika is really good at doing is creating uh, three-dimensional characters that uh, have a bit of tragedy had a lot of comedy and well or maybe a bit of a good chunk of both and uh, mixing them well uh the, the, our flag means death what we do in the shadows all those are comedy pieces tv series that he has uh on fx and some i think they're both on fx yeah um which are great in their own way they're big comedy ensemble pieces but they're also uh, there's a little bit of sadness, a little bit of tragedy in each of them, and it's that great balance that he's so good at doing, and uh, it's the fact that he has such a great connection with Chris Hemsworth and everybody else in this cast that has brought out such great performances and a kind of attitude that, yeah, you know what, 
we're going to have fun doing this. We're not going to just grind out another marble project. And while some people may have felt that, oh, maybe this is just a little bit too flip, maybe just a little bit too funny and silly, you know what? I, I this scene, and I kind of agreed with it to a little, to a certain degree, because there are, there's a lot of kind of terrifying things in this, you know, especially involving children uh, and, uh, and putting them in danger, uh, and then sort of everybody being jokey about it. Not it, but jokey through the whole process, and uh, it kind of left me with a bad taste in my mouth. But this helped me realize that it's I didn't look at it closely enough. So yeah, I think this is something that's worthwhile. If you've seen the film, it's definitely worth checking out and just sort of, I love behind the scenes stuff. I love these kind of documentaries about the things I care about. You know, you know what, you can keep, I've seen a lot of shark documentaries. I've seen a lot of mummy documentaries. Those are, those are fine. If it's what you're into, that's fine. I'm into Marvel. I'm into Star Wars. I will watch the heck out of these, uh, these documentaries. So I'm looking forward to the next one that gets picked. So let's see what happens here. I really can't talk to you too much about what goes on here because it's like explaining an explainer video. It's just, you know, it's what a documentary is in a sense. Uh, but I can tell you what's good about it. And it is good that to see uh, the blood, sweat, and tears that goes into making something like this. And yes, there has was talk in this, that this could be his last Thor adventure. And a little kid, I think his own son, piped up and goes, no, 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 this doesn't have to be your last one. They're like, oh, we'll, we'll talk about it. <laughs> talk about it later. There's there's a really cute scene um, in the rap at the, on the very last day. So it's kind of, that's kind of fun. And of course, Kevin Feige uh, puts his two cents in because he's the guy running the show for a lot of this. So for all of this, and uh, so you want to see, whenever Kevin Feige speaks when it comes to Marvel, you want to pay attention. You never know what he might say. Oh, he's really well guarded. He's not going to accidentally slip something. He's not going to be able to, like, if he's like, oh, Thor has four thumbs. Like, like he's not going to, like, oh, we, we want to reveal that in the next movie. Like, he's, he's not going to let them put that into the final cut. Let's just say that. He does not have Thor four thumbs, just so you know. Ah, what happened? Anyway, um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's, this is a controversial one to start on, but I think all the, I think everybody just likes to complain about things not being exactly the way they, they thought about it in their head. So I take that with a grain of salt. I watch a Marvel film and I love it. I, well, I love it. yeah, they can, they can suck if they want, but honestly, I tend to just go along for the ride and enjoy it. That's why it's really hard for me to call myself a critic. I'm just going, uh, yeah, yeah, it's just not my thing really so uh I, I like talking about it though apparently i'm eight minutes into it talking about it so yeah um yeah that's all i can say uh i'm looking forward to more of these let's pick tomorrow's episode 269 oh <laughs> that's really close we might get another one. Oh no no we won't get another one but we're gonna get another marvel one i can tell you that right now because it's really close uh, it's a short, and there's a chunk of shorts. Uh, these are, uh, this is one of the Marvel one-shots, which are just short films that sort of take a little, it's like a little extra scene that fits between some of the movies. Uh, not not like an after credit sequence or a mid credit sequence. This is a little short film that deals with an element that uh, came up in the film. Maybe ask, answer a question that uh, a lot of people were curious about, uh, or something that leads into something that's coming next in the MCU. And uh, usually you would find these in the extras of certain uh, Blu-rays or DVD sets uh, when they were released. But here they are, they're all on Disney Plus. So we're gonna be watching number 269, Marvel One-Shot, item 47. I think this is possibly the first one no, it's not the first. I don't know if it's the first one, but it's a. Uh, it's one of the more incontinuity ones. Let's just say, yeah, no, and then, then I think it's just been forgotten. Also, <laughs> item forty-seven. We'll talk about it tomorrow, on the next Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. I'll see you then.